right, welcome back. Yes, indeed. Uh, Issa Juguda joins us next. He is a former Minister of State for Transport and Aviation, former Governor of Bochi State, former MD now. Now Bank, and then is a Chairman BOT APC Professionals Forum. Good morning, and thank you for joining morning, us today. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Well, so many things that the country is grappling with at the moment. We have the uh, Air Nigeria subsidy, and you know, just trying to see how we could take all of this in and still come out in one piece. That's but amazing. since you you've been there in that Ministry of Aviation and Transport, you you have a perhaps deeper understanding and insights concerning how some of these things play out of course so what is your impression because now members of the House national assembly they're really angry about this this nigeria air matter several other stakeholders think that look this is not what they told us that it is it is and now we have to grapple with so many things many don't even know what to believe anymore about the existence or otherwise the status of nigerian air what do you think of all of this well, thank you very much. Uh, much as I've not, uh, you know, uh, seen the architecture or read the architecture of how the airline was uh, set up, that is to say who are the uh, uh, shareholders, people who contributed to the equity of the uh, airline. Is it solely owned by the federal government? Is it uh, owned by... Uh, uh, some groups, uh, private sector groups, in, uh, together with government, in partnership with government. Uh, that is what I don't know. But um, <clears throat> all I know about, uh, you know, since the uh, the uh, Nigerian Air was, was liquidated, and it was liquidated during my time, we, along with BPE, uh, liquidated Nigerian Airways. And uh, of course, uh, there could have been options to, uh, you know, uh, turn around the airline, that's Nigerian Airways, but I think the consensus of government then was to liquidate the airline. And incidentally, um, <clears throat> from the books of Nigerian Airways, that time as minister, I went thoroughly through the books and realized they have a lot of assets all over, all over the world. And uh, it could have been possible, you know, using the assets, uh, we could have raised some money without government uh, uh, intervention or contributing to, uh, you know, uh, resuscitation of the airline. But uh, I said the consensus of government was to liquidate. So uh, <clears throat> it was liquidated. And of course, uh, we came out without a, a flag carrier, a national flag carrier. And it was uh, really bad for Nigeria because at least we need an aircraft that carries our own flag around the world. Uh, <laughs> I'll just follow up on that before you make your next point. So, given the benefit of hindsight, do you think it was a mistake for us to have liquidated Nigeria Airways? Well, uh, I was part of the government, and decisions are government, uh, they weren't taking their binding on you. I wouldn't have said it's a mistake. But uh, as an individual, maybe if I was given the opportunity, uh, I could turn it around. Because I did something similar to Sakol. He wanted to liquidate circle too. I said no. Uh, I met uh, President Obasanjo. I told him uh, this company uh, does not even belong to Nigeria Airways, so it cannot be liquidated along with Nigeria Airways. And besides, uh, it's a going concern for now, and it has uh, over a thousand employees. We cannot just afford to, uh, you know, liquidate it without the proper books, legal books, to back it as, you know. Uh, a legal person, so he accepted, and uh, we turned around circle and prepared it for privatization. And I believe if they had liquidated it, uh, the country would have lost a lot. Jobs would have been lost, and of course, uh, uh, the services that they are rendering now to the airline industry, I assure you that uh, it couldn't have been there. So um, it's quite possible to have turned it, but like I said, I was part of that decision and I was even part of the exercise of the liquidation. So uh, in the course of my, my duties, the then president challenged me with uh, setting up a purely private sector driven flag carrier, and which eventually uh, through a, a very transparent process a long it will take us a long time before I can go through so it's better let me just summarize it yes please uh, we were able to market for core investors 
Okay. That is uh, Virgin Atlantic, uh, Lufthansa, and uh, of course South African Airlines. And before then, I had invited the uh, the players in the domestic market, that is the uh, airline operators. If they could form a group, they can come together and raise a capital to invest in the airline too. So, um, in fact, they backed out. So we went and eventually we were able to, uh, uh, through a very transparent process with, uh, with uh, Lufthansa being the benchmarker and then uh, Pete Mawik being uh, uh, the people who came related to related the two airlines after they bid it. And uh, Virgin Atlantic appeared to have one point above South African Airlines. So um, uh, Richard Branson and his group, uh, uh, you know, uh, they contributed 51% uh, of the capital. That's uh, uh, about uh, 20, 20, 20, 20, 26 million dollars. And then uh, we went uh, to the capital market uh, and raised about 7 billion through uh, private placements. But it has to be the normal capital market uh, transaction. And uh, the airline was, you know, was, uh, you know, was uh, officially commissioned and uh, of course a lot of celebrations. And in fact, as to why I would want to strongly believe that uh, it might not be feasible for Nigeria now to say they want to, to float a national career. Why? Why? Because airline business is an economics of scale business. It is volume driven. So you need you need a certain number of you know aircraft flying before you. It's a very expensive business, and it tries on safety efficiency and of course uh, quality service and so on and so forth so uh, i cannot see us today uh, without partnering with the major players internationally because an international business you say you are just a domestic player original player you have not started uh, airline operations so if you want to join the league we had the opportunity but unfortunately we blew it because Soon after uh, I left office and uh, another minister came, another one came, another one came, and uh, he decided that, look, it was uh, it's not a good transaction for him. So he decided to advise government that they should drive away Richard Branson from Nigeria. And uh, it was just a pity. Richard Branson was on CNN. He said, uh, Nigeria is the worst place you can do business. He's advising no, no any international community member should come and invest in Nigeria. Even the mere fact that Richard Branson was investing in Nigeria, he has Virgin Australia, he has Virgin America, he has Virgin uh, India, and so many other places, and they are very successful uh, airlines. And uh, like I said, trying to justify uh, uh, this issue of making it a success story. Today, you might need close to about not less than 200 to 300 million dollars for you to be able to set up an airline that you can call your own. And you are faced with the following competitions. You are competing on the, you are competing with the big, as the uh, the BAs, Lufthansa, American Airlines, uh, Cathay Pacific. Uh, you're talking about Singapore Airlines, and so on and so forth. They are all world players that uh, they have gone to alliances to them. There is the Sly Alliance. There is uh, uh, what they call uh, One World. All are alliances of airlines that pull together. So that at least uh, it's a network, it, and they have gone very far. For you, for for Nigerian air, uh, airline now uh -huh. to say that they, uh, they they want to compete with B, even on the London road, um, I don't know how. But if, so if smaller if you, countries, but but, uh, but if, yeah, but if, Minister, if smaller countries with a smaller markets than ours mm -hmm. could start theirs in less than 10, 15 years, and then they're still running till today. Why can't Nigeria do something about it? Well, I'm assuring you that uh, uh, the smaller, maybe smaller countries, African countries, in fact. I don't know how many airlines. I thought when you talk about having a flag carrier, you have is Nigerian Air Air Airways started the same year with Saudi Airlines. Mm. Saudi today have close to about 600 to 700 aircraft flying. There 
a small country, even though rich, oil rich. But you can see the numbers. By the time we liquidated Nigerian Airways, they had only one aircraft. There must be something wrong in our system. And I cannot see how it would be impossible for us to rush into a creation of a flag carrier that cannot sustain itself. That's well, Nigeria. I, Nigeria, yeah, yes. I, we've been told yes. that there's a difference between a national carrier and a flag carrier. A uh, national carrier is whole, owned even more. Um, I mean, the, the state has more shares in a national carrier. A flag carrier could be a, a body or a company that is enabled by the state to, you know, fly the flag of the country. So, I mean, that's what we have been told. You, well, are, the, uh, you, you the, people are the experts. You can no, educate well, us even further. I'm not an expert. Well. I'm a professional banker and mm -hmm. I'm a finance, uh, finance my, back, my, my background is finance. Mm -hmm. So I was there and I read what they were doing. I cannot say I know anything much about APH. Yes, but, but the little I know, I am assuring you that uh, when you say a flag carrier, is carrying your flag. Indeed. So a national carrier is also carrying your flag. So what is important is for you to have an airline. They say this one is Nigerian airline. Mm -hmm. So right now, I mean, it's interesting that you say that you... you I mean, you're not even preview. You don't even know how know this uh, Nigeria, uh, mm. what exactly the plan mm -hmm. was, et cetera, et cetera. I don't know the capital they have. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe they have uh, maybe a lot of money to uh, start the airline and start competing with the with the international airlines. Are you? And even you see domestically, I mean, do, do, you see, uh, at the time we set up Virgin Nigeria, we made Lagos a hub, mm -hmm. a hub and spoke airport, just like you have Heathrow. Uh, you, uh, all passengers, African passengers, especially West and Central Africa, they fly into Lagos and in the morning they spoke out to their own countries. That was the arrangement. And it was, we had a period of seven years because we used the routes as the assets to set up, to prepare the books of accounts with financial projections so that at least we could market the customers and it would make sense to them. So if you, who, who's been involved in aviation, didn't know, do you think that there, has to, the, there could have been more enlightenment? Because a number of Nigerians too were also kept in the dark. And that's why we saw the National Assembly uh, carrying out an investigation into you know, what exactly was going on with Nigeria. Uh, and it does appear that so far they've not been impressed. In fact, the words of members of the House has really, you know, been to the effect that it is a scam uh, from what we saw. I mean, looking at the fact that an air, aircraft flew in from Ethiopia to Nigeria, they say it was just for unveiling two days after it was back, and so far so good, nothing's been heard again. Mm -hmm. uh, so there have been questions, big questions. Do you think that there needs to have been more enlightenment as to what precisely the plan was, and mm -hmm. for everybody to have a buy-in? Because right. apparently there was a lot of kicking against this floating of Nigeria air. Well, uh, to the extent that uh, from day, I mean, uh, I have not uh, discussed with the minister. Uh, I, at least I would have been able to advise him. But uh, from what I have seen, uh, I, I may, I would just imagine that the money is there, you know, to set up the airline and start maybe the airline with close to about 10 or 15 uh, aircraft. And then, of course, maybe some on lease and maybe some on direct purchase, depending on how, uh, you know, the plan, how is it is planned. Well, from what but we know now, now, we were supposed to be in partnership, so there was a bid, and we understand that Ethiopia Airways uh, was the one that won that particular bid, so we're supposed to be in partnership with Ethiopia Airways, but the local stakeholders said that the way Ethiopia Airways, the business case they made, was such that they were going to be pricing them out of the market. They're going to be, you know, doing what they call predatory pricing, you know, coming down to a level where, uh, you know, it will force other players out of the market, and then much later, it will almost be like I said, they're running a monopoly. No, so, uh, I, 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 that, that was what the local players no, said, the local stakeholders, they took... Mm -hmm. The Ministry of Aviation to course over well, this Well, uh, my experience with the uh, airline operators, sometimes they can be unnecessarily difficult. Because like I told you when I was about to set up uh, the airline, a flag carrier for Nigeria, they were invited. But you can see that they could not even come together to talk. Because we held a series of meetings with them. I said, please go and sit down and talk as patriotic Nigerians. If you will not be able to, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, you, at least you should be able to uh, uh, take a stake in the airline 
and uh, be part of the operations of the airline, but they refuse. So I'm afraid uh, I don't see how uh, setting up a flag carrier can, uh, how are they going to, are they going to compete on pricing or on quality service or what? What are they going to compete or on fares? Because it's, a, it's, it's an open business and you compete. So uh, uh, there is no, nobody can subsidize you. So you are in business, you are profit uh, driven, you are profit seeking <clears throat> so that you can underwrite your expenses, uh, your overheads and what have you. So I don't think, uh, uh, no matter the number of airlines they would have brought in, it's the same Nigerians they will employ. Yeah, but, but they argue that, I mean, when you say no, nobody can subsidize you, that the way uh, where this company was going to be getting its own funding from, they're going to be getting funding from eggs and banks, they had access to that. Ethiopia Airlines already is a well-established airline. They get their own funding from local banks at a high interest rate, and that already, you know, put them on an, e on an even foot. So uh, but, uh, these were their own complaints. Yes, but I don't think that there's anybody uh, stopping them from going to eggs and banks. If they qualify, either Exim Bank uh, Africa, I mean uh, Exim Bank in China, Exim Bank, because we have assessed facilities from different financial institutions the world over. Mm -hmm. Nobody is stopping uh, the airline operators from assessing funding to uh, you know to fund their airlines. But it will be a very big mistake for any uh, you know uh, because I was a banker anyway to the airlines before going joining government. So in fact, most of the uh, the, the airlines Bellevue. Uh, Almost yes, all of them. I had they had accounts with me, and I was managing. The, I was managing them. Some of them, uh, you know, uh, we, we lease aircraft for them. Some of them, uh, you know, we uh, we give them overdrafts for their air, uh, overheads and so on and so forth. So, given that uh, position, given that experience, also on the handling their finances, uh, I don't think what they are saying is true. Mm. All right, well, we'll still get your views on the petrol subsidy, but in the meantime, let's go to our colleagues in Lagos. Yes, thank you, Chamberlain. Um, Your Excellency, part of the position put forward by Captain Roland on the program yesterday was also that the airlines uh, put up interests in the bid that was advertised such that they could have a stake in Nigeria Air. And I recall he was saying that uh, Air Nigeria was the first to express interest, but that they didn't get any response from the um, Ministry of Aviation, or i.e. the minister. So uh, it would seem, if that is true, it would seem like there wasn't a competitive uh, field, even competitive field for airline operators, the domestic airlines in the country. How do you respond to this? Uh, if that is the case, I think uh, uh, they were wrong. Uh, everybody would have been given the chance to come and uh, compete and bid. So if there was fairness or there was uh, concealing of information in the process, maybe if they can prove it, why not? I think it's not a big deal. They can reverse the process entirely. So uh, uh, if people, uh, airline operators were, <coughs> were were blocked from competing, I think that is very unfair. But uh, uh, if uh, uh, the minister could do that, uh, I would be very surprised. So it's something that I would want, not want to believe. Mm. Uh, Your Excellency, are you also aware, as it emerged from our conversation yesterday, that details from the contract bid uh, were to the effect that um, the Ethiopia Airlines that was to own 46% in the stake uh, was given a 15-year moratorium? Uh, and if that is true, one of the questions we asked was, there are airlines, moratorium domestic airlines that are thriving. Uh, let, let me land on that, sir. There are domestic airlines that are, that are thriving in the country. Uh, doing business well that are not giving that same kind of tax holiday? Well, I think uh, tax holidays uh, is uh, something that has, uh, by law, uh, I think, um, especially in industry, is normally five years. Uh, but uh, uh, there are incentives you normally give maybe core investors like that. And it could have been possible, maybe they gave them up to 15 years. But uh, I would be shocked if uh, a government would concede to giving uh, somebody, uh, this in a, a company, to, to concede uh, the best, uh, should comply with the law five years. But I don't know for airline industry, if there is a separate law that backs 
airline to give uh, you know uh, waivers tax holidays for, for for up to 15 years but i think it's unheard it's unheard of um, but uh, being a business concern and given that Nigeria wants to attract an investor to come, there has you just have to let go certain things so that at least you can attract the investor because he's putting in his money. So it could have been possible they would have, but I don't know if this is true that it is up to that 15%. But if they have already presented it and it's so that it's 15 years, I can say it's, uh, it's unfortunate. Mm. Uh, so many questions to be answered in that regard. You also argued only yeah. moments ago that you know Nigeria is not mature yet for a national carrier because it's a capital intensive venture. No. Uh, but no. if we look at no. um, uh, no. Aquaibo, I didn't State. say that. I didn't say it's not mature. I said we don't have the capacities now to set up, uh, you know, uh, uh, a very successful profitable uh, uh, flag carrier for the country because we have to align with a major player. Much as Ethiopian Airlines, yes, it's an international airline. It was set up in 1947. It has never, you know, uh, you know uh, for any reason, uh, closed shop. Even at the time of war, Ethiopia, Ethiopian Airlines were flying. Yes, they are doing very well. But I'm assuring you, uh, uh, they cannot compete with uh, some of those that we want. We would want to, uh, you know, partner with so that uh, Nigeria too can carry its flag the world over. And uh, it's a lot of money involved, a lot of investment. Because, for instance, now. If you, are, if you are in partnership with British or Lufthansa or Virgin Atlantic, you are assured of all the lounges, there are lounges all over the world. When Virgin Nigeria took off, there was a, a, a Nigerians using the Virgin Atlantic counters the world over. And already there is this alliance, automatic alliance. So if you are flying to, uh, say, uh, the Far East, I mean, you book here and then uh, if you go to, uh, uh, you know, London, uh, you transit and then you bought another, uh, you know, Virgin Atlantic and uh, there you are. Okay, so, so, so I, I got you. Due course, uh, like I said, uh, Niger uh, Lagos would have been a hub. All the African uh, passengers would be uh, brought in into Lagos in the, in the morning and then they are, they, are, they are taken to either Central Africa or West Africa or even, uh, you know, part of North Africa. Okay, so, so, so at least I got you is, on your concern about it Are you being... going to take the tax cares, taxpayers' money and lump it into a business that you are not, you, you, you are, you are not sure is going to succeed? Okay, so at least I got because, you on, on the concern uh, you, about it being uh, about oh, it being now capital you set up the airline. I'm assuring if you now, as an individual, set up an airline and you say you want to uh, make it uh, an international player, I think you have not started. But okay, at so least I got, you, I got you on the and concern. Look at the, the, you know the environment. So I got you on the on the concern that no, it is we can't. You, we can if we can uh, if we can uh, forego you know rendering services to uh, uh, to our people and you not know, build the roads. We can decide to set up an airline. Why not? Sure, we can buy up to a hundred maybe uh, okay. aircraft. And uh, but we are going to be challenged. At the end of the day, competition might even force us down, and uh, we may uh, we may crash as a business. I'm afraid. But uh, be as it may, we can. But uh, like I said, if it is something that is private sector, if we want to bring in money to be a, like a venture capitalist, to uh, you know, set up the business and sell it or other this thing to, 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 to run, I think uh, it's something that is an option. Okay, but, so uh, if, if, I may now, come in, if I may come in now, sir. Money, and then when we daily need it locally to, uh, you know, to, to manage our affairs, I think it's not, uh, it's not right. Okay, if I may come in now, sir, at least I got you on the concern that it is capital in intensive and we don't have the capacity. But how is it that, you know, um, a state in the country is able to own and manage an airline and in fact has six aircraft in its fleet? Oh, how many of their, 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 their aircrafts are flying internationally? And internationally, when I say internationally, uh, an aircraft that can take you from here to China through their alliance, if they are just local players, madam. They will continue being local players, but certainly not flag carriers. I'm talking about a flag carrier for a country. <coughs> so domestic, you can decide to, but I'm assuring you if it is government run, 
eventually you know how government uh, does but if, business. But if the local players, business. if the local the players the were day, giving an opportunity that, to you know, own the stakes in the of bid, Nigeria have run in the past. You know their fate. All of them have been run aground. I just mentioned about Nigeria Airways that started with uh, you know uh, Saudi Air 1974. Uh, they ended up with uh, no aircraft. And we, we were, it was a bitter thing for us to liquidate the airline. But by the time we liquidated the airline, uh, the, the, uh, the Saudis had about almost 800 aircraft flying in the air. So government is not good in running businesses. An airline but, is but something that, uh, you know, you see, you have to render very quality services and you have to drive on safety. Nobody wants to go and board an aircraft that uh, there is doubt in safety or, uh, you know, uh, you know, they can compromise on, uh, you know, comfort because most of the passengers that travel internationally, where you make the money, because uh, economy class, uh, you know, fear, fear, I cannot run an airline. The bulk of the profit is made from first class and uh, business class. So it makes up for the first class passengers. Yes. So it is important to take note of this, that airline business is a kind of a business that is very... Uh, are unique and uh, different from other businesses that uh, or services uh, you know but, but, but if, the, if the local uh, if the domestic oh. airlines were allowed to own stakes in the bid if their bids were considered um, and they were allowed to initiate the international alliances that you talk about would it be out of place to start small and then um, you know if the bilateral services agreement were enabled through uh, you know um, interventions at the federal level would it have been impossible to start small and then grow over time oh madam in fact uh, the uh, the roots we have what they call uh, you know uh, uh, they, they call it I've uh, forgotten the term they use in a particular language. But um, are, normally routes are normally assigned to airlines. And uh, if, for instance, there are, for instance, British Airways have about uh, two frequencies every day into Nigeria, one to Lagos, one to Abuja. And uh, we are also equally entitled of a flag carrier to have two, you know, we can designate our airline, fly twice into, uh, into London. And the same thing with all other countries. So if they emerge as big players, why not? It's our own right. So Lufthansa too, they are coming in every day. We are also entitled to one slot into Germany. Uh, or yes, we can go in the morning and go in the, in the evening. So all other countries that uh, we have this uh, bilateral air agreement, I mean we are entitled to uh, you know, designate our airline to those routes. But like I said, it is not, even, it is not easy to set up even an airport lounge. Now, assuming you are, you, are, you, are, you, are, you are going to set up your own airline, yes, you will need, uh, you may a lounge. Uh, you certainly will not get one in British uh, Airways. They have their own wing for other international airlines. The whole place is, I don't know, but it's something that without alliances, madam, I'm sorry. That's my own belief, and I am yet to be proved wrong. All right, well, we'll, we'll do. Uh, thank you for coming on. I will definitely look forward to more conversation on this matter because we're sure this is never the last we'll hear of this Nigeria air matter. Because when the new minister comes on board, there will be questions definitely. from Nigerians about this. Definitely. Thank you for coming on, as always. Uh, it's Ayugoda, uh, former Minister of State for Transport and Deviation, also former Governor of Bauchi State, and former Managing Director, Nile Inland Bank. Thank you for coming on today. Thank you.